This documentary delves into the intricate details of the ambitious plan from Prima Plantations Indonesia to take the plantation project in Indonesia to greater heights. Their aim is to not only ensure impressive returns on investments for the clients of Gaharu Capita Indonesia, but also to promote long-term sustainability for the entire plantation. The proposed change in strategy will give GKI clients the opportunity to extend their involvement in the project for an additional 20 years, and transform their role from mere clients to valuable stakeholders in the endeavor. PPI's sustainable approach to management is a significant departure from the current management style in place. By implementing this new approach, PPI hopes to create a project that will not only achieve short-term success but also ensure its long-term viability. This shift in management style reflects a commitment to balancing profitability with sustainable practices, with the goal of benefiting not only the stakeholders but also the environment in which the plantation operates. The change in management style proposed by PPI is a strategic move to reassure stakeholders that their interests are being actively safeguarded. By outlining plans for enhanced sustainability and profitability, PPI aims to instill confidence in GKI clients that their investments are in capable hands. Whether GKI remains playing an active role in the sales of trees in Indonesia, or whether a new entity takes over not only the management and after sales of the project's clients, the commitment to a prosperous and sustainable future for the plantation project remains a top priority. This shift in focus towards long-term sustainability not only benefits the stakeholders but also contributes to the overall success of the project in the years to come. As part of our efforts to keep clients informed regarding the status of their investments, PPI plans to follow in GKI's footsteps by inviting clients and owners to a so-called plantation tour event in Jogjakarta. To ensure that event is effective and informative, which will effectively become a seminar and not at all a plantation or inspection tour, PPI proposes to only invite a part of the clients at once. <laughs> While our initial preference was to have all clients meet together in one event, the total number of clients would exceed the available event space limits. As such, we have set a maximum of 100 to 200 clients per seminar block to facilitate a better experience and networking opportunity for our clients. PPI firmly believes that bringing clients together in a group setting is a more effective approach than individually, for several reasons. First and foremost, it provides clients with the opportunity to ask pertinent questions and receive answers that address concerns that may be beneficial to all attendees. Furthermore, it allows PPI to explain what went wrong in the past and provide a clear-cut strategy on how to move forward in a transparent and informative way. We are confident that we can answer any and all of our clients' questions, as our new company is comprised of local Indonesian staff who share a common goal of not only returning investments to Indonesian investors but also doing so while supporting local managers, farmers and companies. Our primary goal is to enhance local-to-local -local connections, ensuring that Indonesian nationals work together with one another for a combined national profit that ultimately benefits everyone involved, from the investors all the way down to the farmers tending the trees. PPI is committed to achieving this goal by providing a highly transparent, communicative and collaborative space for all clients, with the aim of delivering positive results on everyone's investment in the grafting of these valuable trees. As such, we are committed to making every effort to ensure that the seminar is a valuable experience that helps our clients understand the benefits and potential outcomes of their investments. We want to provide a comprehensive update on the project's present status and goals for the future, while giving clients the opportunity to ask questions and connect with one another. Of course this may ultimately result in individual tours of the plantation. This depends on their final decision to partake in the new strategy or not. The Ambarukmo Hotel where the clients were first introduced to the GKI Plantation Investment Scheme, may serve as a suitable venue for this seminar, 
as its GM and owner are committed to supporting PPI and GKI on this project's corporate social responsibility element. The seminar will provide attendees with details about the project's plans for the near future. We will take the opportunity to clarify important changes regarding the management of clients' investments. Specifically, PPI should be assuming financial management control. Clients should therefore consider the company as a financial management agency of their portfolio, rather than a sales company or a maintenance entity of Gaharu Trees. Our priority during the seminar will be to provide former GKI clients with an update on their portfolio's current status. We will explain how the clients will change into so-called stakeholders or perhaps even members of the Jog Jakarta Plantation Society and ensure that the portfolio meets current investment standards. This approach will offer clients of PPI a better understanding of their investments and our commitment to achieving excellent results on their behalf. We recognize the importance of delivering clear and comprehensive updates to the clients. Therefore, we prioritize addressing our clients' existing portfolio status and provide them with precise and detailed information about their investments. We will present a laser-focused approach that highlights the immediate return of investment on existing Gaharu trees, followed by an introduction to the Keenum species, and a plan for continuing the investment they have made in the past, in the form of a 20-year added-on income, based on the perpetual nature of these new species called the Keenum Gaharu species. Which is actually nothing more and nothing less than a clone from the Gaharu sinensis species that does not have to be replanted. Since it keeps growing after harvest though we will inform the clients that the harvest cycle of the tree is added on to the first original Gaharu species harvest to a second six years harvest, a third five years harvest and finally a third four years harvest without any additional investment. This will bring the total length of the project to 18 years minimum and maximum 21 years. The length depends on the status of their trees. Since the original contract with GKI was based on 15 years, and we will mention COVID and Acts of God as excuses for GKI's failure of returning their investment on time, and we are convinced this will be a reasonable and acceptable reason to consider accepting this new proposal. Even more convincing will be remarkable aspect of this investment opportunity that it requires no new investments. Instead, the only necessary change involves the consistent and steady payment of operational fees, which PPI conveniently refers to as membership fees, stakeholder fees, operational fees, and whatever other terms that are necessary to convince the clients of the fact that this is a good thing and a proper change of strategy. And let's face it, after all, these are rather normal payments for stakeholders to make. This term has been deliberately chosen to remove any negative or intimidating connotations associated with the term maintenance fees, or other similar terms, or the fact that some clients will insist on a former promise that maintenance fees would never have to be paid. We firmly believe that our transition to an inclusive stakeholder strategy, rather than a traditional product-based approach, can unlock profitable investment outcomes for the GKI clients. PPI's commitment to accountability, transparency, and strategic guidance provides a vast opportunity for clients to experience significant returns on their investments. Although we understand that clients may want the return of investment that they were initially promised on their old-style Gaharu Trees Package investment, participating in this new strategy will ultimately deliver a far higher return of investment than was originally promised. Prima Plants Indonesia has a clear plan on how to transform our clients from purchasing products to becoming stakeholders, based on the data we have collected in our database systems, containing the historic purchases and maintenance parameters of their trees. However, we understand that delivering a comprehensive and clear statement to our clients is vital. Therefore, the first thing we will provide to them is a precise and detailed outline of the inoculation, harvesting, processing and sale of those trees that are ready for that process. We will inform them of the expected timeline for each process and, most importantly, the exact amount of money they can expect to receive and when. 
We believe that this information is critical to our clients and we remain committed to providing them with a transparent investment experience. Therefore, when we meet with our clients, our top priority will be to provide them with the necessary information, ensuring they have a clear understanding and expectation of their first investment return. It is important to note that this new business model can only be adopted by the clients who choose to do so voluntarily. We believe that it is unlikely that clients choose to stick to the old-style reversion strategy that GKI is presently offering, but we could make it so that some clients do stay with GKI, at least in the beginning of the six months period of handing over management control to PPI because it will deal with the income GKI needs to fund the present plantation tours. This is therefore the right moment to try to make you see again that GKI and PPI should actually always stay together in this business of selling Gaharu to the local and international market. What is important is that GKI understands that marketing and after sales is something that isn't necessarily intertwined with the actual sales process. And it is something that we feel we may be better at. It may be shocking to realize that knowledge is something that is essential in the marketing and after sales of products like Gaharu, and not a disadvantage at all, but we believe that this a fact, and some things that has always worked against GKI. That it actually harmed the sales process, and decreased the sales number significantly. And, since it is cold reality, that many Indonesian companies have suffered from the negative impact of COVID, with many even going out of business completely, it makes it very credible that GKI must introduce a partner like PPI, right now. A partner that presents the client with a solution that prevents GKI's ship from sinking, like the others. A solution that actually not just returns the client's initial investment, but actually exponentially increases income. That may be an offer, they cannot refuse. To further convince clients, we have identified a potential loophole in the existing sales and purchase contract from GKI that could work to our advantage. Our analysis has revealed that the client needs to state their preferred oil or wood chip processing just before the tree is ready for inoculation. This presents PPI with an opportunity to charge an inoculation fee of 400,000 IDR to the client for providing the necessary inoculation chemicals or inoculum. By doing so, we can significantly reduce the financial burden on GKI of 8.1 billion IDR that would have been necessary otherwise. It also allows our clients to take more control over their investment by covering the cost of the inoculation process themselves. We believe that this move will enable us to provide a more sustainable and efficient financial plan for our clients, making PPI a preferred choice for investment managers. The situation at hand has caused some clients to be uncertain about their investments. It was previously communicated to some clients that they were exempt from maintenance fees, but operational fees were never discussed. The stakeholders agree that as the company is being taken over by another firm, there is a need for changes to be made to ensure that this project remains viable. Failure to do so would mean that the customers cannot expect to receive any returns on their investment, and this is attributed to the effects COVID and OJK. It has been established that this proposal introduces further fees to the stakeholders. PPI's belief is that the future of client investments needs to move beyond the traditional model of buying, reloading, or upgrading products. Instead, the company proposes a more efficient and effective approach centered around fees, such as the inoculation fee mentioned earlier. It is therefore mandatory for stakeholders to pay a monthly operational fee of IDR 32,500 per month per tree for as long as they remain invested in the project. The proposal for the plantation is to continue for another 20 years, after which stakeholders can opt to extend their membership, which is another term used for stakeholders in this context. It is worth noting that the stakeholders' commitment to the payment of fees underpins the future of their investment. This proactive approach is essential to sustain the plantation and ensure that the original investment remains intact while attracting additional income for stakeholders. PPI's proposal is innovative and futuristic, aligning with global trends to ensure that the venture remains profitable, sustainable, and attractive to stakeholders. 
We understand that the age and growth rate of their trees are critical factors to consider, and we developed a strategy that adapts to each client's specific needs. By taking a personalized approach, we can help our clients maximize their investment returns while minimizing long-term maintenance and management costs. We are committed to providing the necessary guidance and support needed for a successful investment journey and believe that our approach offers a more sustainable and profitable option for our clients. We recognize that each client's investment in the GKI plantation project in Jogjakarta is unique and that the age and growth rate of their trees are critical factors to consider. For this reason, we have developed a customized strategy that adapts to each client's specific needs. Our personalized approach will help your clients soon to become PPI's clients to maximize their investment returns while also minimizing long-term operational costs. Moving forward, we will use the term operational fees instead of maintenance fees. This change is necessary since some clients have misunderstood their obligation to pay for maintenance fees. As we have done with our plantations international projects in Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia, we shall now begin charging operational fees to the owners of the plantation project in Jogjakarta. We are fully committed to providing the necessary guidance and support for our clients to have a successful investment journey. Our approach offers a more sustainable and profitable option for GKI clients and we stand behind the transformative investment opportunity we are proposing. Since the beginning, we have proposed the option for our clients to transition their existing Gaharu trees to the new Keenum species. It is important to note that this transition does not involve a blunt reversion of clients' trees to the new Keenum species, instead, we present clients with four different transformation options. By transitioning to the new species, clients can maximize their return on investment while reducing long-term operational costs and increasing profitability. The Keenum species has the potential to revolutionize the investment market in countless ways, such as its ability to be harvested repeatedly without requiring replanting. This ensures a sustainable and profitable investment opportunity for our clients. Our team is dedicated to providing the necessary support and guidance for a successful journey. We are prepared to help our clients navigate this process, and we have conducted comprehensive research to support our proposal. In the coming chapter, we will provide a detailed explanation of our research and how it aligns with this transformative investment opportunity. It is imperative to note that all stakeholders must fully understand the consequences of agreeing to the new management agreement, signing directly with the new organization called Prima Plantations Indonesia. This is clearly a local company, led by local managers, thus managing a local company invested in by local people and managed by local people. Meaning this is all about Indonesian trees, maintained by Indonesian farmers in Indonesian soil, managed by Indonesian managers. But, doing so they will have to acknowledge their decision to forfeit any contractual agreements with GKI, what is in fact an international company, even though with good intentions, still a not-so-Indonesian company. As a consequence the clients that agree to this will be subjected to a monthly fee of 32,500 rupees per tree per month, the equivalent of a little more than 2 US dollars per month per tree, continuing the project for 18 years, irrespective of their tree's categorized status in the Jogjakarta Plantation Database. Within the Plantations Management System Database, our categorization of the 35,000 trees has unlocked an opportunity to cater to each client's specific needs and expectations by devising a unique client-based proposal. This proposal provides comprehensive recommendations on the optimal approach to either inoculate or change their original non-perpetual Gaharu species into Keenum. A crucial point to bear in mind is that while Category A trees offer exceptional potential for inoculation, Categories B, C, and D may require alternate approaches, as inoculation may prove arduous for these categories. Option 1 pertains to the highly valuable of Category A trees, which have been divided into four levels of subcategories, being 
a 0, a 1, a 2, and a 3. The numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3 within the subcategories determine the tree's age and readiness to be inoculated. A grade of 0 denotes a tree that could have been inoculated previously, while a grade of 1 indicates a tree that can be inoculated now. It is important to note that investing in trees beyond grade 1 does require an increase in budget. As such, it is essential to understand the necessary steps required to grow Gaharu trees successfully. While our databases are supported by artificial intelligence features and can provide sales staff with basic possibilities, some cases necessitate a unique, one-on-one -on -one client based solution that is formulated by our highly experienced PPI sales staff. It's therefore quite important that GKI understands that this endeavor will only be successful if we combine our skills. Understanding the intricacies of growing Gaharu trees requires an understanding of the tree's unique needs and ensuring that they are met appropriately. There is no standard approach to providing care for these trees, every tree is unique and necessitates specific attention to ensure that it grows to its fullest potential. Our team is explicitly trained to assess each tree's individual needs, ensuring that they receive the care required to grow optimally. One-on-one -on -one consultations with our experienced sales staff ensure that clients receive customized solutions tailored to the specific needs of their trees. As such, investing in our Gaharu trees offers significant potential for returns, with the added advantage of access to expertise that is dedicated to ensuring the success of your investment. Suffice to say that in this documentary, we are trying to show you that indeed we know what to do. Yes, indeed, we may be the only ones to know what needs to be done, the only ones who really know what we are doing. The complexity of this process cannot be overstated, and it is vital to understand the status of each tree to make informed sales and management decisions. Without this essential knowledge, the process becomes more challenging, which is why having a clear understanding of tree status is an essential upside of sales and management. It is difficult to overstate the importance of knowing the status of the trees in question, a fact that becomes evident when navigating this highly specialized sector. A one trees are ready for immediate inoculation, while a two trees need another 12 months, and a three need 24 more months before inoculation becomes feasible. Don't spray, pray but don't spray, right? Inoculation costs 400,000 rupee, or 25 US dollars, per tree with an operational fee of 32,500 rupees, a bit more than $2 charged per tree per month for A2 or A3 trees, respectively, for 12 or 24 months. The length of time is guaranteed, and if it exceeds the specified duration, PPI will cover the operational costs. Following the successful inoculation process, the next step is for the tree to undergo graftulation, which involves inserting a graft about 30 centimeters below the skin. Once the category A tree has been harvested, which generally takes 6 to 12 months, the old species tree is removed, and the tree can then continue to thrive perpetually as a kenum tree. This particular process presents two notable advantages when compared to merely removing and replacing the tree with a kenum sapling from the nursery. The first benefit of using this process is that the graftulated graft grows much faster than a sapling from the nursery, due to its reliance on the adult roots of the original old species tree. Second, the inoculation takes place just before the graft is grafted onto the old species tree, causing the kenum tree to produce resin from the first day, thus improving the quality and earlier harvesting of the resin. Ultimately, Every client has the freedom to choose if they want to inoculate their A2 and A3 trees. There is also the option to immediately graft A2 and A3 trees, wherein the tree would be cut off at 30 cm and the graft would be inserted into it. When it comes to trees requiring another 12 or 24 months of operational fee payments, grafting is an intriguing and personalized alternative that our team can recommend based on specific client needs. PPI highly regards the individual choice made by the client as the most crucial aspect of our business model change.
we strongly believe that this aspect of the process is the most compelling point of our sales pitch, as our objective is to help clients choose the option that best aligns with their potential investment returns and financial objectives. We are committed to helping clients make informed decisions that align with their financial interests, thereby providing them with the best possible outcome. The other categories do not have a number attached to them, they are simply just category B, C, and D trees, so let's start with the category B trees, what do they stand for and what do they have to offer? First, it is quite understandable that one would not want to wait three years paying a total of 1,570,000 Indonesian rupees, the equivalent of 99 American dollars and 37 cents, on maintenance fees for a category B tree. And the term maintenance fees should be called operational fees, but whatever we call it, it remains a payment the client must make to keep the ball rolling, as such it remains a fact that a Category B tree will take at least two more years to reach the inoculation point. That means 24 months times 32,500 rupees, or 780,000 rupees, or 49 American dollars and 36 cents in total over 24 months or two years. That may be not too much for us Westerners, but for a GKI client who has 10 trees this is quite a high price to pay. Truth be told, the status of the trees may be negative because of bad maintenance and COVID and a thousand other reasons, but in some cases the status of the trees are not bad at all. In many cases, due to replanting, or simply because the original trees was planted in the last phases of the Jog Jakarta plantation, the tree is not ready for inoculation and harvesting because it is simply not yet the time to do so. Let's face it, the last clients were signed up as late as 2020. And trees planted in 2020 are not to be harvested before 2027. Truth be told, even in cases where GKI sales staff made promises to clients that were rather unrealistic, it would be just as unrealistic and unfair for clients to expect harvest before it is possible. So, it does make sense to invest in a tree that would generate income in 2027 based on inoculating the tree and paying two years or three years of operational fees as a stakeholder of the Jog Jakarta Plantation Society. Even after the tree is harvested it still changes in Keenum, and the client will still harvest the tree in question, after the original Malasensis or Sinensis tree has been inoculated and harvested. But still this tree will never generate more than 3,160,000 Indonesian rupees in Ood oil income. Do note that Gaharu oil will never generate more than 325 American dollars per tolar. Added to that we know it will not generate more than one tolar. But, looking at the numbers, looking at the income it generates for the client, it may well be a choice the client needs to make, wants to make, should make. And we should help the client to make the decision that is best for the client in question. I say again that for PPI it doesn't really matter what decision they make. It matters only that the client is happy with the decision they make. Happy with the advice we give them. Thus, Careful consideration must be given before making investments to ensure the best possible return on investment. So from PPI's point of view grafting category B trees immediately at 30 cm from the bottom is the most practical choice. Not graftulation, and certainly not brutally reverting the old species tree, Imalasensis or Sinensis, into a Keenum tree either. But it remains the decision of the client. And trust us when we say that every client will have his own way of thinking. It is not important to force our way of thinking upon them, it is more important to let them know we understand their past, present and future decisions, and that we are providing them with the knowledge that makes them decide what is best for them, at this moment. Even if they keep changing their minds. We are there for them to make the best decision in the present, ready to improve if their financial status changes because that's what we do. True, looking at the raw numbers, in the case of category B trees, it is more profitable to change the tree in a Keenum tree by ways of graftulation. But it is more important to show the client that the final decision rests with him. 
PPI is simply committed to providing guidance and support throughout the entire decision-making process. Our focus is on helping clients make informed decisions that align with their investment objectives and generate the best possible returns on investment, and that's it. At this point it needs to be clear that PPI has an answer on all questions that clients may have. It is quite useless to spend many more words on the remaining options PPI can offer the clients, PPI truly has an individual answer on every status of every client's portfolio, but, let's explain, even more briefly that we have two more categories of trees, starting with the category C trees. Category C trees are basically not successful and if they are of the sinensis species the best option would be to graft them to Keenum trees. This process would only be possible for sinensis trees as it would not be profitable to graft them on the Malasensis species. This would slow down the growth of Keenum trees given the slower growth rate of the Malasensis species. It is possible that these trees may actually fall under the category C classification because they are of the Malasensis species and therefore require additional time, extra nourishment and therefore more investment before they can be productively harvested. If the tree in question is of the Sinensis species and not yet big enough to be grafted, we should advise replanting with a fresh sapling from the nursery to maximize the potential returns on investment. Ultimately, we would work closely with the client to identify the best course of action based on their unique circumstances and investment goals. Category D trees, or holes where once trees existed, are dead, even if they still haste leaves. And the best option is to replace them with fresh Keenum grafts from the nursery. Since these trees are no longer viable for growth and cannot be grafted, replanting with new saplings would be the best way to ensure a successful harvest and maximize returns on investment. Our team of experts would work closely with clients to determine the best course of action for replacing these trees to facilitate optimal growth and performance of the whole plantation organization. To effectively highlight the value of PPI's approach, it is crucial to provide a tangible example showcasing how our customized methods can greatly benefit a client. Our strategy's effectiveness is not solely reliant on human effort, but also heavily dependent on the robust data supplied by the plantation management system databases. In our role as advisors, we delve into a thorough analysis of each client's unique circumstances, evaluating the historical performance of their trees, previous offers extended to them, and past plantation tours conducted. Additionally, we meticulously assess the current state of the original trees within their portfolio, taking into consideration all relevant factors to facilitate well-informed decisions tailored to each individual's portfolio. We firmly believe that this personalized level of service is paramount to the future prosperity of our clients, with individual attention and consideration representing a crucial element absent from many existing portfolio management approaches. The following illustrative example sheds further light on the advantages of our methodology. Client, Junidi and Yaya. Client ID, JK1611274. Plantation visit, Thursday, the 7th of March, 2024. Allow me to delve into the details pertaining to this particular client named Junidi, associated with the client ID JK1611274. To start, the sales and purchase agreement executed on November 29, 2018 establishes a project duration of 15 years, entitling the client to one single harvest. The client agreed to pay PPI, the maintenance company, a 20% harvest fee as per the terms of the agreement, which is actually not enough to keep the ship floating, as they say. Trees are required to have a minimum girth of 40 cm located 150 cm above the ground. Harvest timings for oil should fall between the 7th and 15th year, while wood chips should be confirmed within the 9th to 15th year. This presents an invaluable opportunity for PPI to levy inoculation fees, alleviating the burden on clients like Junidi from having to procure 8.1 billion Indonesian rupees or 6.33 million American dollars. 
The clients are obligated to specify when and what they wish to inoculate, as outlined in the agreements they've signed. The absence of yield guarantees as specified in Mr. Junidi's agreement, a common clause in the majority of GKI agreements, implies uncertainty regarding the quantity of tolas a gaharu tree can yield. PPI holds the technical expertise to substantiate and assert realistic and credible figures in this regard. Upon scrutinizing the facts, figures, and essence of this arrangement, it becomes apparent that adherence to PPI's counsel will steer the business towards profitability and dependability once more. Given the promising outlook of this deal, we eagerly implore, recommend, and confidently anticipate the fruition of this MOU. This optimism extends beyond Indonesia. As we harbor similar confidence in replicating this success in Malaysia, albeit with a prudent and measured approach slated for a decision in the ensuing year. Discussing the outcome of the meeting, the GKI sales staff offered to revert all of the client's trees, but despite seeming interested, the client declined due to financial reasons. Speaking frankly, I wouldn't have been interested either in this offer, if it only aimed to raise maintenance fees and sell me a few more trees. In my opinion, there was no real advantage offered to the client, except delaying the expected return on investment, which, due to the reallocation of his original trees, based on the request of GKI, looks to be expected soon. Too soon actually. However, the client may not even be aware of this fact. Unless he examines the CVM, which was not offered during the sales meeting or or any other time, as is clearly visible in our database systems, it will never be clear to the client what his true status and opportunities are. However, if the sales representative had focused on the primary reason why clients visit the plantation, which is the inoculation status of the trees, or in other words, the suitability of the client's return of investment, the following factual details would have emerged for the client's consideration. Fact A. Two trees could have been inoculated a year ago. Fact B. One tree can be inoculated now. Fact C. Three trees can be inoculated in 2025. Fact D. Three trees can be inoculated in 2026. Fact E. One tree can be inoculated in 2029. Isn't it interesting though, to note that the sales representative was unaware on how to view tree details, neither in the CVM nor in the SIR, which I personally sent but remained unacknowledged and may not have been forwarded, therefore not understanding the details of the portfolio of the client. I guess the answer is, not. Not interesting and not important. Do please note though that my observations are not intended as negative or blunt criticism, but rather as constructive feedback. I believe that my E5 option combination strategy is more effective than blunt selling and even bluntly reverting, as it enables us to develop tailored advice to customers on how to optimize their investment portfolio. With this perspective, I propose an alternative approach for the future. I call it the five option combination proposal strategy. I believe that my E5 option combination strategy is more effective than blunt selling and even bluntly reverting, as it enables us to develop tailored advice to customers on how to optimize their investment portfolio. With this perspective, I propose an alternative approach for the future. I call it the five option combination proposal strategy. The financial consequences of the tree status could have been used to satisfy the client's concerns. The financial consequences of the tree status could have been used to satisfy the client's concerns. Allow me to underscore this fact with a spreadsheet. Assuming that the client would be willing to pay the inoculum fee for oil production and the maintenance fee, although I doubt that he did, he would only lose 14.7 million rupees after deducting his initial investment. It is possible that, as many clients are known to do, he may believe that his money is already lost. However, if he realized that he could earn 38.3 million rupees in total, 
it could be an incentive for him to take note of the sales representative's counsel and decide it would be wise to pay the inoculum fees and maintenance charges as operational fees that guarantee him of harvesting not only the A0A1 trees but also the A2 and A3 trees. On top of that, if we illustrate to the client that an investment of a mere 32,500 rupees per month, or $2, would lead to the extension of his original Malasensis trees to Keenum for three more cycles, he will profit from the project for a total of 18 years, assuming in some cases 20 years, and in other cases less than 18 years, with a total profit of for 84, 1 million rupees. Image 1 shows option 1, inoculation only and get out, and image 2 shows option 2, inoculation followed by means of graftulation and grafting, but as I have described before there are five options in total available, and every client has the possibility to choose the option that is most interesting for the client in question. The following are the available five options. 1. Inoculation alone. 2. Inoculation and graftulation. 3. Graftulation. 4. Grafting. 5. Replanting. Every scheme has its own set of positive and negative figures, but excluding option 1, they are all profitable. Even in the case of option 1, getting some return on the initial investment is preferable to getting nothing. This statement is not an exaggeration, Keenum income is based on 2 US dollars per gram, with an average yield of 600 grams per tree. The income of Oud oil must be 325 US dollars per tolar which may be too much, but based on the total income received from operational fees, formerly maintenance fees, alone, PPI is capable of reaping profits that can balance the shortages made in selling the oil for a lower price than we might get for the Oud oil. I have conducted an extensive feasibility study, and the numbers seem quite accurate. I can provide examples of all our remaining clients in Indonesia, and I am confident that these proposals are practical. Admittedly, we must further explore certain details, but I will refrain from doing so until we have signed the MOU and to further discuss these plans in greater detail. At present I am quite confident they should work theoretically. However, I can assure the reader of one thing. This client alone substitutes an income of 181 1 million rupees or $11,486 for PPI based on 20% harvest fee, which should be 25% actually, as well as the monthly operational fees after 20 years. And that amount is based on once client only called Junidi, who owns 10 trees only. The project entails 35,000 trees. We do not want to calculate what kind of money that represents at this moment, because that would be a sad thing to do. The PM for system databases now possess a web-based login feature for a new module that provides sales representatives with best advice proposal suggestions for customers by entering their client ID, like the SIR module, but in a more graphical manner. However, unlike the SIR module, this module doesn't simply report on the status of trees or offer simple feedback, instead, it advises the sales rep on the customer's options in a unique way. The module can be accessed from any device, including Android, thereby increasing efficiency while eliminating the need for extensive knowledge. In the end, it must be apparent that no database can offer a complete single ideal solution, and that informed speculation, imagination, and insight are required to provide the customer with the correct personalized solution. Nevertheless, I am confident that the Plantation Management System 4, Generation 2, will provide the necessary technological details to assist the sales representative in delivering the ideal consultation on the matter. The proposal offers three solutions based on the five current investment continuation processes, each unique to the individual customer and tailored to their tree possession status. The sales rep receives the selected proposal from a list of variations and options in the form of a clear and transparent PDF document. Furthermore, 
the document includes links to online videos that the sales rep can share with the customer, aiding them to make an informed decision tailored to their unique situation. We have to ask the question though, the question that everybody has in their mind is suppose. I understand that the technical details shared in this text may cause confusion or be perceived as unnecessary for the sales process we have conducted in different countries. However, it is precisely at this juncture that I want to emphasize the importance of being the kind of advisor that stakeholders of a Gaharu growing company need. Without in depth knowledge and a constant drive to improve, it is impossible to be true consultants. As a consultant and plantation creator in the past, I have proven the value of this approach, and it is evident that when sales are complete, PPI must take up the mantle and drive the project to a successful conclusion. There is simply no other way to complete this project in a successful ending. The success of this project is reliant solely on our ability to provide expert advice, knowledge, and support to our clients. Our commitment to continuous improvement is a crucial component of our success, and we must continue to focus on delivering the best possible outcomes for our clients. Ultimately, there is no other way to achieve a successful ending for this project, and we must remain committed to providing excellent service throughout its completion. Feasibility study for a total handover in 2024. I am not sure it is necessary to show you that we at PPI think that this plan is not just feasible, but also very profitable for all parties. Let me try to quickly show you that this seems sound to me and let me ask you at the same time to help me prove that it is a bad idea. In contrary of what others may think I am not confident that all my predictions are 100% correct. A part of me wanting to say that this project is based on wanting to do the right thing in Indonesia. Another part wants to believe that the top management of Plantations International did indeed never plan to run. Yet another part tells me that I am not the right person to make predictions about the feasibility of this project. As you have stated often in the past, and by now Errol has proven that you were right, I am not a financial kind of guy. But let me nevertheless try to make a preview of, financial, things to come. Before I continue, I must acknowledge that I have a tendency to anticipate the future with imagination and some insight, and my skill in identifying trends or opportunities that others may miss might this time be a valuable asset. While my abilities may contribute to the successful conclusion of this project, I remain aware of my limitations and am committed to working collaboratively towards the best possible outcome. 1.1 1. 1. The Total Sum of Money Needed Let's start with looking at the bare essential first elements that are crucial to the success of the new organization and how much funds they need. 1.2. How to get these funds in PPI's hands. By having PPI handle customers directly and collect maintenance fees for up to 18 years, after this point, referred to as operational fees or expenses for cooperative shareholders, for 35,000 Malasensis trees, which will subsequently transform into Keenum trees, PPI can effortlessly cover the total of 100 billion rupee with the monthly fee of 32,500 rupees per tree, comprising of monthly income of 1 billion and 137 million and 500,000 rupee per month or just under US $100,000 per month, only from the operational fee income. The initial target is to revert 33% of the 35,000 trees within the first six months after signing the MOU. This equates to 11,666 trees that must be reverted, utilizing the five-option combination strategy. This percentage of trees will generate approximately 380 million rupee per month, allowing GKI to step out and have no further monthly expenses. Please be advised that each month, any number of rupees received can be allocated towards the decreasing the required 225 million operational costs that GKI pays PPI to ensure the continuation of the project. After that, PPI should be proficient in conducting plantation tours independently. As previously mentioned, 
we have the necessary resources in terms of accommodation, food and beverage, and transportation, as well as the motivation needed for success. The only thing lacking is the funds to cover their travel expenses, but I am confident that if we can sustain operations for the first six months, the Arab drums, the WhatsApp group and other previously negative social media elements will work in our favor. I am confident that with dedication and hard work, we can achieve our goal within the next six months. If for some reason we are unable to reach our target in that time frame, we will reassess our strategy and make any necessary adjustments and possibly extend the process with another six months. The 100 billion rupees, the equivalent of approximately six three million dollars, is not to be paid from day one, meaning Firstly, repair and innovation needs to be done immediately after the six months target trial. Inoculation of at least 2,000 trees needs to be done within those six months, and the plan is to start with 150 liters coming in in June 2024. The order should be confirmed within a few days. This has to do with the fact that UGM is lobbying to help is bring it in without having to bribe border officials when clients pay that back the next batch can be put in, and so forth, reimbursed to PPRD Malaysia. The number will grow algorithmically when more clients are met and persuaded. In the end the clients pay for the inoculation themselves, see image 1 and 2 on pages 16 and 17 respectively. The marketing and sales expenses are number one. If possible PPI should be ready to aid GKI in the six months already because we have still not mentioned the problem of the expenses that GKI is always facing on the plantation tours, or at least not at the moment I am writing down these words in this chapter, but I assure you this will be dealt with in this document, before or after this chapter. The total sum of the above bullets, to be reached within the first six months, is roughly 564 million rupees or roughly 36,696 US dollars, an the equivalent of 17,350 trees monthly operational fees. That is almost 3,000 trees, 2,891 exactly, sales, read, reversion, per month. This may sound not feasible, but then I need to remind you that you have sold, read, reverted, over 10,000 trees in a year, in 2022-2023, to Malaysia based on a much more difficult to reach target than this one. In the end, if this turns out not feasible then I request, as described in previous chapters, an extension on MOU 2023 part number 2 to MOU 2023 part number 3 before signing the final memorandum of agreement. I would appreciate it very much to get your expert opinion on these matters. And in the end, this is not just for PPI, this is very much also meant to get Indonesia of your back and to prevent the ripple effect that we keep discussing all the time. 3. No need to fear of takeover either. I have thoroughly examined all of the agreements that GKI has made with clients and have identified several issues in the contracts that could potentially promote client cooperation with the new management company. I would like to bring these concerns to your attention. However before I do that I want you to understand that I am simply informing you of this interesting issues and do not aim to disclose them to clients, as a matter of fact I find GKI could perhaps be stronger in addressing accusations or insinuations from clients if they occur in the future. 3.1. Force Marger Neither party shall be liable for any delay or failure of performance hereunder due to any contingency beyond its reasonable control, which shall be deemed to include, but not limited to the following, Act of God. Except for acts caused by the seller's negligence or willful default. The seller shall not be liable for action taken or omitted. By, under, or in connection with this agreement in good faith. It stands to reason that COVID must be included in our considerations. GKI cannot be held responsible for delays or failures caused by an indirect act of God resulting in tree damage due to lockdown restrictions. This gives GKI the right to transfer the project to another company, potentially through a joint venture or the stakeholder's adventure. 
Despite significant losses, GKI solvency remains intact. It would be more reasonable for GKI to hand over the project to a foreign investor for a different return on investment, avoiding bankruptcy. Various options exist for how the investor could recoup their investment, appealing to experienced business and finance professionals as a viable solution. 3.2 Knowledge and Experience in Finances The previous statement leads me to another point in the MOU. The purchaser acknowledges that he, she has knowledge and experience in financial and business matters, either alone or with the aid of a representative, and is fully capable of evaluating the merits of the sale tree's ownership. Honestly, I find that statement particularly amusing. It is still surprising to me that some clients enter into agreements without any understanding of business and finance, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Investing in a business like this, one would naturally assume there are expenses like maintenance and operational fees. While neither a strong argument in a discussion amongst intelligent friends nor legally binding in any way, it is amusing to compare the thought of a tree sales rep that sells gaharu without the need to feed the trees with a car salesman, who states that his car will never need gasoline after leaving the dealership with a one-time filled free-of-charge gasoline tank. As a new investor, I would immediately understand the importance of operational fees to pay for feeding the creatures. This might appeal to the client's common sense or otherwise clarify the presence of that above-quoted sentence from the GKI MOU that states that it should be clear that the clients are expected to have knowledge and experience in financial and business matters. 3.3 Living and Growing Organisms Another provision in your Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with the client reads. The purchaser acknowledges that the sale trees are living organisms that are subject to various climatic factors, inoculation treatments, as well as their individual growth rates and volumes. Consequently, fluctuations in production and harvest values may occur due to biological reasons beyond the control of the seller and managing agent. I rest my case. There are numerous reasons for GKI to transition this project for the purpose of rescuing it and not abandoning it. It should be noted that clients who accept this agreement will be required to sign a waiver acknowledging the reasons behind this decision and renouncing any potential claims against GKI. I am confident that OJK will need to reconsider their stance. While I cannot publicly admit it, it is evident that the funds allocated for inoculation which would have ensured the success of this project, were diverted to bribe corrupt officials at OJK and the Jakarta police. This financial mismanagement, which was never disclosed to the clients, coerced GKI to continue sales even though senior management believed it was a lost cause. And there is more. Much more in your agreements that GKI could use to clarify it makes perfect sense to hand over the project without losing face, or worse to get into the ripple effect that we have discussed in another chapter. For final conclusion and last words. While not a strong argument in intellectual discussions or legally enforceable, it is entertaining to juxtapose the concept of a tree salesperson peddling gaharu without needing to nourish the trees with a car salesman claiming that his vehicle will never require gas after leaving the lot with a one-time filled tank. As a novice investor, I quickly grasp the necessity of operational costs for sustaining the enterprise. This could resonate with clients' common sense or illuminate the inclusion of the statement from the GKI MOU, underscoring the expectation that clients possess financial and business acumen as outlined in the agreement they have signed.